Hi everyone, welcome to our tutorial today which is called how to use glyphs. I am a little froggy today because I'm sick so please excuse that. But this is a really fun tutorial that will take your design skills to the next level. It's also very simple but has a big impact. So you may have seen lettering kind of like what we have on our screen before where it's got all these beautiful swashes, swirls, they look uh, perfectly placed and they're still part of the same font so they still do look cohesive. As you'll see, this H right here has a different swash on it than this H right here. And yet, the body of the H and all the angles are still the same. And you'll also notice that I still am fully editable here. I can delete and add text however I like because I have not created outlines. So none of these swashes were manually created. I did not spend hours and hours making this beautiful piece, digitizing it, and putting it together for you. I simply just use the glyphs that already exist within this font. And we're using Adobe Illustrator today, and you can use this on InDesign, Photoshop, but if you want to use it on something like Microsoft Word, then you will need to use the Character Map or Character Viewer on your computer, depending on if you have a Mac or a PC. And I'll go ahead and link the Adobe Suite below. This is what you're gonna need if you're really trying to be a serious designer. So over here, I've shown you how this phrase looks if you just type it in in the font. This one is called Melanie, and I'm gonna link all three of the fonts that we're gonna use today below so that you can get them yourself if you're interested. So when you're purchasing a font, if you want to use glyphs, uh, make sure you check out the full character map of that font. Some fonts have glyphs and some don't, so I take that into account when I am purchasing a font because I know the type of glyphs that I typically want to use with my clients and I look for those purposely. So I've just typed in how to use glyphs the regular way in Melanie script as you see up here. This is the exact same font size and everything that I used for that other image. I'll show you both of these on the same screen so you can see how different they are. So let me show you easily how we change them. So there's a couple different ways. So if you just highlight one letter, the glyphs appear to the bottom right. You can see five different versions of this H, and all you have to do is click them. So you can see this one is a little bit different than this one over here. So there's five different versions. Some of them may not look awesome. That's okay. Every glyph has its own place, so it all depends on what's before, after, above, and below the letter that you're replacing. So as you'll notice, there's five different variations here, but if we click this arrow, it brings up our glyphs panel. Another way we can do this, I have it saved down here so I know I can always click it right there, or you can find it in Window, Type, Glyphs. So that'll bring up the same thing. So now we have way more than five different H's we can choose from, and I love this one because it has so many beautiful glyphs to choose from. I love this one. So you can just play around, click these guys, until you find the one that you like. We went with this one for our example image, so I'll stick with that. And as you can see up here, it says alternates for current. So that's alternates for current selection. That's because we have this H highlighted. If we unhighlight it, nothing's shown up because nothing is selected. If I highlight this O, all the different O's are going to show up there. So another thing we can look at is the entire font. So up at the top, we've got basically your normal alphabet. We've got the normal H that we had typed. If I type H on my keyboard, I get the same thing. And then after that, we have all the variations. So some of this is for language purposes. For instance, over here, we've got your A with your umlauts above it. Um, there will be accents, various things that you want to use if you're typing in different languages. And one thing that I always look for is these few variations down here. So if I were to type a double T, it looks a little weird because the left part of the second T overlaps with the right part of the first T. So I really love fonts that have a glyph for that. So see, that looks a lot smoother. So if I were typing a name with two T's in it, for instance, I would just get rid of those two T's and replace with this one and it looks a lot more natural. So I always look for those T's. I also love this TH where the hook of the T becomes the H because that's something I do in my natural calligraphy as well. So that's really the key here. All you have to do is find what you like, try it all out. 
Um, you can look at the entire font at once or you can just do the alternates for the current selection here. So this is kind of what we did to create this one. And we tried to play with it a little. Um, we ended up adding a little tiny space that's only 37 points right here between the Y and the P just to create a little bit more room. You can also, um, sometimes I like to use the glyphs in different ways. So for instance, if we really liked um, this shape of this swirl, but we didn't want to use it on an A, we could always outline the font, cut this guy off here, and then attach it to a different letter, or just use it as a swash of its own. So talking a little bit about what glyphs I look for, I've got three different fonts that I love. This one is called Aurelia Script, this one is Melanie, and this one is Belucha. And if you've noticed, I of course have been watching Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> so that's where these names came from. So one thing that is really a little bit frustrating sometimes is that um, a lot of fonts have great glyphs for their lowercase characters, but not so many for their uppercase characters. So for instance, in Melanie, we have these great ending glyphs for all of the lowercase characters, but then it looks really off on this side. And if we go over to the M, see there's no glyphs there. So we either have to do that manually, or sometimes I'll just encourage my clients to go lowercase if they like this particular font, because we can make that more balanced. So I especially love a font that comes with glyphs in the uppercase letters too. So for instance, this one has some slight different variations there that you can use. So I'm gonna change this actually to Belutra Pro because that is the font name where all the glyphs lie. And you can see this went glyph crazy and it looks a little bit nuts. So we're gonna simplify that. Um, one thing that I don't love usually is these R's going down. So we can simplify that to a slightly smaller one or just the normal one, which I like. I might like the smaller one there. And I'm going to use the smaller one here. I like this E um, because it is ending the word. So we're going to leave that there. And then for these purposes, this P is a little bit crazy. But I just want to show you some of the alternate so that one's extra crazy. This one's the simplest version. And then we've got a couple in between. So this is a really cool font. It's a little bit formal for my taste, but I do end up using it sometimes. So as you can see, there's slight differences in all of these depending on how you want it to look. And then T's usually have really good glyphs because you can go, um, you can go a little crazy with them. So I like something like this, of course, if that P wasn't there. Um, since it is, we'll go a little bit heavier on the left, so we can keep that balance. And then anything with a D sender, like a G, Y, um, J, etc., is going to have some cool glyphs, usually. So we'll just test out a few of these to see if we can find something that we like. I kind of like that one because it's a little bit wider. So just as a reminder, if I were to just change this there. That's how it looks normal. This is the full glyph version and then where we've ended up is somewhere in between, which I like. One question you might ask is if you can kind of find and replace all with glyphs. So you can do that if you want every single Y to be replaced with this particular Y. However, if you want every last letter of every last name to be uh, replaced with a contextual swash like this, that isn't really doable. You have to do them one by one. So for instance, if you're using our data merge tutorial um, to create envelopes with one of these fonts and you want every name to have this uh, last swash at the end, that is really tricky and you'll have to do it manually. So just keep that in mind when you're creating a design with glyphs that you're not going to be able to use this on every name if you have variable data. You'll have to do that manually, um, but this is a great thing to do for invitations, like the main names on the invitations, anything that's going to be reproduced, um, this is a really great tool to use. So this only took me a couple minutes to make, and you can see what a huge difference that makes. Um, I went a little bit overboard on this one as an example, of course, but just imagine the effect that will have on your overall invitation if you use that if you use glyphs 
on the names, a couple well-placed swashes, and I love to take letters that are the same and use glyphs to make them look a little bit different because that gives it that more handwritten feel. So I'll link all three of these fonts that we used. As a reminder, it's Aurelia, Melanie, and then Belucha over here. These are all examples of fonts that have great glyph options, but remember to check the full character map before you purchase a font because not every font does have great glyph options. So things that I look for are these starting and ending swashes, and I give them a little bonus. I'm really excited about a font if they include glyphs for capital letters as well to make them balance out with those ending swashes. So tell us what you thought of this tutorial and how you plan to use glyphs. Um, and as always, subscribe to the Doorbell channel for more tips and tricks for creative business owners. Thanks, everyone. Have such a great day.